How did you get people to watch you? It takes a certain amount of vulnerability and also just an understanding that you're the vessel. It has to come from something bigger than you. It's less uh, focused on you, it's more about, okay, this is the, the vibration that I'm creating. It's unbelievable when you follow that, what comes. Mm -hmm. What makes you hypnotic? Mm. I'm pretty sure that the spirit that comes through me has nothing to do with me. So whenever I rely on that and move through the world with that, that's some other stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. God is, is, is moving. And I just like to, um, at my best and at my most hypnotic, move with that spirit and 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 we all can feel that i think you feel that that's a real thing that's more real than anything do you ever fight it i don't fight it but i i find it hard sometimes to submit to it because it can push you to do things that you may not feel up to doing yet or you may not understand it fully all the time. For me, that's what my pra that's what my faith tells me. That's what my practice of faith tells me is that when we come up to those moments, that's why more faith is always the answer. So we define hypnotic rare breeds as having this this charisma, this charm that can be used to spellbind, to influence, to captivate. You are spellbinding when you play. You are magical when you talk. When did you know that you had that gift? So I observed a lot of stuff. When you're a kid and you grow up in a big family like I did, big uh, extended family, you get to witness so many different personalities, so many different spirits that have their own way of navigating the world mm -hmm. and defining the world. So then you start to kind of have this sampling of how you want to construct yourself you look at them and you say, well, I like that. Uh, I don't like that. I, I learned from that. And I want to grow into that. And then all of a sudden you, you're in positions where you're apart from them and you have to define how you want to respond to the world and situations arise where you have to deal with them on your own. Yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's just um, finding that voice finding really what you want to say. Mm -hmm. And after a while, you, you just start to become passionate about stuff. When did you find your message and what was it? I think thinking of um, the name of the band Stay Human back in about 2011 was one of the first ways the message was articulated. You know, Stay Human really is about connecting with other people and bringing people into the room together who would maybe never be next to each other if it That's wasn't right. for the experience of the music. Through this, this celebration, through this exchange of music, it shows people something about our deeper humanity. It, it's amazing people are laughing and dancing next to each other. Yeah. How, how a lot of things that you may have against the person next to you, yeah. uh, you just forget in that moment. Yeah, Anthony Bourdain said one time, I may not like your political views, but I bet we like the same barbecue. Oh my goodness, food and music. Food and music. A lot of things, <laughs> you yeah. can't beat it. That's but right. I, I think it's interesting though, because a lot of bands try to cultivate that experience, but you're fucking brilliant at it. It, it. it takes a certain amount of vulnerability and also just an understanding that you're the vessel and the people are there for an experience that is not necessarily about them, their perception of you. It has to come from something bigger than you. It's two things at once. You have to have confidence and a certain level of ego to step out there and conduct that and lead that and push that. But also you have to 
subjugate your ego to a level to where it makes it about them. In the book, in this section of hypnotism, we talk about one word that really gets people upset, and that is manipulation. Mm. You are a master manipulator in the best way possible because you are able to manipulate people's emotions. You're able to manipulate what you want them to think and feel when they're experiencing you, whether it's while you're playing or whether you're speaking or whether you're just hanging out and having dinner. Yes, it gives me a, a definite rush to be able to influence a person's state. And that is really um, a, a, a privilege, but it's also the thing that, again, it's a slippery slope. And there's a responsibility with it, you know. So I, I, I oftentimes think about intentions in order to mitigate any negative form of manipulation through my gifts. So the intention leads it. What is it that I want this room to feel? What is the, the wake that I want to leave? Like, what is this imprint that I want to make? It's less uh, focused on you. It's more about okay, this is the the vibration that I'm, I'm creating. And this other person will benefit from that. Have you ever gotten caught up in your intention to serve yourself? Have you ever allowed your hubris Definitely. to kind of <laughs> take hold of you and grab you in all the wrong ways? Yes, absolutely. Well, that's, that's, the, that's the beauty about a vice and a virtue is the duality of it. It's the It's the... It's the light and the dark of it. It's when it becomes hubristic that it becomes something else. And it's a force, And but the positivity is a force too. So it's like, you have to figure out how to balance that. And mm -hmm. I think as you become more secure in who you are, you begin to recognize that, especially if you're really self-aware. You recognize it through a process of um, failure to commit to who you know your true authentic self yeah. Yeah. to be. Yeah. That sense of understanding who you are helps you to avoid doing those things because what, what are you really trying to do when you do that you're trying to fill a void you don't feel like yourself or you don't feel comfortable something so you got to get something yeah. from somebody else mm -hmm. or you got to make somebody else do something that will make you feel better about being in your body and once you just reflect and say oh this is who i am and i'm gonna commit to that it doesn't it's not easy yeah but it becomes very easy to recognize when you have those kind of thoughts and and to shift direction when that that kind of thought presents itself yeah is there been a moment in time though that you've really had to have that conversation with yourself to check yourself oh absolutely i think that i i, I as a performer especially as i started to develop um even in small circles when I was um, just moving to New York and developing a, a following and people would literally follow us. And uh, it was a time where we had people <laughs> with cameras like wow. at all times mm -hmm. and, and, and kind of um, looking up at, at one point saying, like, what are we doing this for? What, <laughs> yeah. what is this? What's the yeah. point? Yeah. <laughs> is it about this? No. So then you just start cutting. You're just cutting stuff. Sometimes that means you have to cut relationships off. Sometimes that means you got to cut off certain um, activities uh, or, or, or things that um, may seem like they're, they're, they're benefiting you, but actually they aren't. We would get to places and I would just be like, why am I here? Mm -hmm. Look, You look around and just be like, what am I doing? what's the intention of me being here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And and then you just leave. Mm. We all come up t to um, a place where we have to decide. Okay, I'm I'm about this, mm -hmm. and everything else is not about this. I'm gonna have to cut it. What are you like as a leader? That's evolved too. Mm -hmm. I like to lead through um, throwing people out of their comfort zone, but putting them in a position that is based on the things I see in them that maybe they haven't seen and they haven't developed. And I just put them in that position and evolve that. To see that. if they yeah. can 
rise to the occasion or to build oh, their already, confidence. Oh, I already know already that know they, they can, can do it. They don't oh, know sometimes, most of the yeah. time. So you but see something in them, a light. Absolutely. And you're trying to bring that forward. That's definitely one of my mm -hmm. gifts. You played when you were younger on the corner of Frenchman. You, New Orleans is swirling with musicians. They all got some kind of magic going on. How did you get people to watch you? You you have to have conviction. Mm. There's a great um, understanding of what you want to do that can be intellectual, and that's great. But if it's not coupled with conviction, then you don't have the, the strength to... Um, go through the hard hardship <laughs> you don't have the tenacity the yes. courage to keep like getting up and Pushing. taking the black eye right yeah and i think that's that really is what stops a lot of people because there's hurdles mm -hmm. that you have to jump uh and walls that you have to break through once you get through one the next one is bigger or yes. harder like when i moved here to go to juilliard i was at school and there was a lot of push to um become a certain type of musician. And if you don't accept that, then there can be um, a, a struggle in terms of your identity. Well, mm -hmm. is what it, what I brought here valid? Those are the kind of yeah. things, identity um, hurdles, hurdles of, um, of um, money, finances, you know, being poor, that, that can easily make you stop playing music and <laughs> get a real job. Yeah. Do you believe that it went from being a job to a calling? I think it always was, and we all have that. We all have something that we were doing and or we were brought into, yeah. and it seems as though it was just we stumbled into it, but then we realized 10, 15, 20 years down the road, we look back and like, oh, okay. Yeah. That was all supposed to happen just like that. Do you think everybody has something in them but it's not been fully cultivated everybody has that there's something i think that you just have to be in a position to access it and whether it's poverty whether it's um socioeconomic barriers you know or, or a sense of societal oppression uh systemic abuse or <laughs> a, a myriad of things that can take you out of a position to capitalize on your gift. You have to find a way around that. Yeah. And sometimes you figure it out, other times it's somebody coming into your life, helping you to see or pulling you out of things. Um, and sometimes it's just time. You know, you, you go through life and you realize, you know, mm. I did that in a way that was negating my possibility. Right. <laughs> Let right. me go into who I am. So, Whatever it, clicks, it is for right? you, yeah, it clicks, it clicks. exactly. Yeah, it it's clicks like something like, it's later like you're on. opposing forces, right? And then one day you find something and you're like, I just plugged into the thing that I'm supposed to be doing, and it changes your life. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's great if you find it early, but it's never too late. So I think anybody who's in that position can they can get to it today. Rare breed is so important because so many of us, I think, don't realize that our identity has been silenced mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we wrote rare breed for people who had felt like that voice had been drowned out by other forces mm -hmm. other voices other people who were projecting their idea of your path onto you right and you're not strong enough to say that's not me mm -hmm. that's not for me it's about not only knowing that but also about leaning into that and celebrating it and letting it off the leash and letting it become the true sermon that you're delivering. Mm -hmm. Taking that risk. Yeah. And it's hard too at times, but that's how you know you're on the right path. That's right. Does John have a dark side? Everybody has a dark side. You know how when you, you're working on something or you trying to develop something and you have an idea of what it is, like a strong vision of yes. what it is. And, <laughs> and and you just start to like um, nitpick. Or yes. <laughs> yes. It's a certain kind of um, elusive perfectionism and it's never enough. That to me is when the dark side of Jean-Baptiste comes in. Yeah. 
to me, it's, it's forgetting that none of us are in control. We're not in control. So just like your destiny is predetermined and you walk into places that feed that and help it to grow and help you to get there or you walk into places where it's a detour. It drains you too. Exactly. Do you ever feel spiritually bankrupt? I feel like I've gotten to places where I'm not drained, but I feel that I'm not, um, I've lost perspective. Mm -hmm. And, and that typically means that I have to get into um, what I call the, uh, the wilderness. <laughs> and go, you got to get out. You got to go yeah. find yourself. You got to yeah. get out and understand what am I looking at again? What am I doing? Where's that place for you? It, it, it's really anywhere in, um, in solitude that gives me a sense of um, peace. Um, so not necessarily New York City. Mm. <laughs> About it. <laughs> I find that I have to do the um, the cleanse from city life every so often to maintain my, my perspective and, and yeah. direction. What is your purpose? Wow, that's a big question. Mm -hmm. I just want to really get people to understand that there's something greater out here. Just get people on that path. You know, for me, my faith in God and understanding how to really share that with people through music, through living through friendships, just living out that purpose through those relationships, um, uh, really fostering relationships. And then I would say to extend that is to leave behind a great body of work, like something that 100, 200 years from now will still be adding value to people's lives. Just like you think about you listening to uh, Beethoven or something. Mm. It's like eternal. Mm -hmm. mm. I love that. It's like listening to you is like listening to a sermon. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, <laughs> not. <laughs> I mean, I'm like feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> what makes you a rare breed? Everybody has something that they can tap into that only they can. Nobody like any of us will be in existence ever again same experiences same mind same genetic code living with your body and your experiences and your destiny so when you lean into that that's rare um i made a commitment to do that and i think um i've made discoveries that continue to push me in that direction once you make that decision you can't go back mm -hmm. so you, you got to move forward and that makes you even more of I would say a rare breed. My motto is Be happy. The world would be better if We all knew who God made us to be. I'm not very good at Being vulnerable with those who are not vulnerable with me. The biggest misconception about me is I'm always happy. It bothers me when? When people don't see who they really are. I never thought that I would be a leader at such a young age. And finally, someday I'm going to create my masterpiece. <laughs> Love it. Love that. You're so good. So in, in 20 years from now, where is John Baptiste? Oh my goodness. That's the toughest question. <laughs> I, I, I'd really take things at, at, at a um, immediate day by day pace. So hopefully by that point, I'm surrounded by people who love me and that I love and that I want to be around. And we're doing the things that we were called to do. Well, you just got two more friends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm with you. All right. All the way. I like it. I like it. Beautiful words. Thank you yes, so much. Thank you. So Thank much you. Absolutely. Out.